What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This morning the SAG nominations were officially announced. Unfortunately, I could not do a live reaction to the nominations because I did have to work this morning, but I still wanted to make a reaction video and I wanted to make it as authentic as possible. So I consciously stayed off of social media while I was working today. It was extremely difficult, trust me, because when I'm sitting around waiting for orders, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, but today I said, no, I have to stay off of all of those. I just watched YouTube videos all day long because I did not want to ruin my true blue reaction to who is nominated. So who do I think is going to be nominated or my hopes for nominations before I actually look at the actual nominees? I mean, of course, Oppenheimer and Barbie. Barbenheimer is going head to head every single award show. They're either tied for nominations or they have the most nominations. One has one more than the other one. So obviously those two are definitely going to be the lead contenders. That's what I'm, that's what I'm expecting. Of course, Killers of the Flower Moon, that is definitely going to receive nominations. Poor Things is going to get recognized as well. My hope for the SAG Awards or the nominations, I should say, I'm really, really pulling for the Iron Claw because I feel like the Iron Claw is so deserving of recognition. And so far this award season, it's been completely shut out. So because SAG has the ensemble nomination instead of a Best Picture award, it's the ensemble of the cast. I'm kind of hoping that Iron Claw could somehow sneak in there somehow, some way, and possibly even a Best Actor nomination for Zac Efron because he truly does deserve it. So that's what I'm expecting. And the Iron Claw is my big hope. So am I right? Let's react. Let me look this up. Okay. So I already have a website pulled up. I think it's People Magazine. I just Googled it. Googled it. There we go. Oh, of course. It's an ad. Okay. <laughs> there we go. All right. People. SAG Awards. I'm looking on my other phone. Who is nominated? So, all right. Let's just dive into this. All right. Barbie, the bear, and the color... I'm not going over TV nominations, just to let you know, because I don't really react to the TV nominations. Although I am very happy that the bear got recognition, because I love that show. Great show. Okay, so, so far with this big headline here, we have Barbie, the bear, and the color purple all have nominations. Okay, well, that's not shocking because, I mean, that's just what we expected. So that's not shocking. Okay, where's the categories? There's six categories for the film side of things. We have lead actor, supporting actor, lead actress, supporting actress, the ensemble of a film, and then the stunt category. Okay, so here we go. Outstanding performance by a male actor in a leading role. We have Bradley Cooper for Maestro, Coleman Domingo for Rustin. Okay, standard. Paul Giamatti for The Holdovers, Killian Murphy, Oppenheimer, absolutely, and Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction. Oh my God, there's no Leo. No Leo. Okay. <laughs> okay. We knew this was going to happen after the Golden Globes because the Golden Globes are split categories where more people could get nominated. So I feel like Paul Giamatti came over and like took Leo DiCaprio's nomination. That's okay though. I mean, he's more than deserving to have a nomination. He was great in the holdovers. Okay. I'm kind of like digesting this right now. Other than that, there really aren't any huge surprises in the actor category. That's the big one, though. The, you know, the the absence of Leonardo DiCaprio. Because I thought for sure he would sail all the way through award season. Okay, so no Leo. Let's move on to outstanding performance by a female actor in a leading role. Annette Benning for Nyad. Lily Gladstone, Killers of the Flower Moon. Carrie Mulligan for Maestro, Margot Robbie for Barbie, and Emma Stone for Poor Things. Okay, these are standard as well. I'm not shocked by any of these, 
We're missing Fantasia Barino. I will say that. No Fantasia Barino for the color purple. So that is a big absence right there. Considering color purple obviously got nominated for other awards, but not Fantasia. So I feel like Annette Benning is kind of the most shocking nomination here because I, that should have gone to Fantasia. I'm sorry. Like I saw Nyad and I saw the color purple. Fantasia's performance was better than Annette Benning's. I mean, they both gave solid performances, but Fantasia, man, like she, she gave it all in that performance. She really, really did. So, I mean, I'm not shocked by any of these. These are good. But if it, were, if it were up to me, I would have swapped out Annette Benning for Fantasia Barino because I personally feel Fantasia is more deserving of a nomination. All right, but let's move on. Nothing too crazy yet. Nothing too crazy. All right, supporting male actor or best supporting male. There we go. <laughs> Whatever it is. Sterling K. Brown. Oh my God, Sterling K. Brown. American fiction. What? Willem Dafoe. Poor things. Okay. Robert De Niro, Killers of the Flower Moon. Robert Downey Jr., Oppenheimer. Thank goodness. Ryan Gosling for Barbie. No Mark Ruffalo. No Mark Ruffalo for Poor Things. Willem Dafoe got the nomination over Mark Ruffalo. Are you kidding me? I'm shocked. I am shocked at that. Because personally for me, with Poor Things, when I saw it in the theater, I thought Mark Ruffalo's performance was beyond better than Willem Dafoe's. Willem, Willem Dafoe's is good. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed it. He's deserving of a nomination. But if you had to choose between the two, I would have given it to Mark Ruffalo all the way. I am shocked. I am shocked. And you know what? I just thought of another performance in the leading actress category that's missing Natalie Portman for May, December. Not there. Okay. That was another one that just came to my brain. I'm sorry. But wow. And speaking of May, December, no Charles Melton, no Charles Melton for the supporting category. So that is a little bit shocking as well. So Sterling K. Brown and Willem Dafoe came in and just really shook things up and knocked out two like consistent contenders and really, okay. So this is shaking things up, especially because I believe SAG the acting, you know, the actor voters, I believe that is the largest acting body for the Oscars. So this could be very telling of what is going to occur when it's time for Oscar nominations. This, this is interesting. This is very, very interesting. Okay. Now we're moving on to supporting role female. Okay. Best supporting actress. That's what it is. All right. Emily Blunt. Oppenheimer. Daniel Brooks for The Color Purple. Penelope Cruz! Sorry. Where, where did that come from? Where, Penelope Cruz for Ferrari. What? Where did that come from? Penelope Cruz for Ferrari. Jodie Foster for Nyad. Deserving. I think Jodie Foster's performance is better than Annette Bening's in Nyad. So I have no problem with Jodie Foster being nominated and Divine Joy Randolph for The Holdovers. Oh my gosh. Speaking of The Holdovers, no Dominic Sessa either for the best supporting category. This is going to happen. I'm, I'm going to think of other people. Penelope, that's the most shocking nomination because Penelope Cruz has not received any kind of acknowledgement in any other award show up until now. So SAG is all about Cruz. SAG is all about Cruz. Wow. No Julianne Moore for May, December. So, so far SAG, not like in May, December because they did not nominate any of the acting categories. This is interesting. A lot of people think May, December has a shot for the Oscar. Maybe not. Maybe not. Because if no one got nominated for the acting categories, that is extremely telling. That is interesting. Wow. Pen Penelope Cruz. I can't even say her name right now. I'm so like flabbergasted by this nomination because literally out of nowhere and no Rosamund Pike. No Rosamund Pike for Saltburn. 
I'm kind of a little bit disappointed in that because I did enjoy her performance in that movie. I thought that was like the highlight for me. At first, I wasn't sure about it. But then after I thought about it, I was like, you know what? I actually did like her performance a lot. So that is a wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we got the obvious choices. You know, Emily Blunt is in there for Oppenheimer. Danielle Brooks for The Color Purple. Divine Joy Randolph for The Holdovers. And then Cruz and Foster are kind of like the interchangeable ones we could have substituted, but they got in there. They got in. Okay. So now we are at the ensemble nomination for a motion picture. And no America Ferreira for Barbie. Just thought of that one too. No America Ferreira. Okay. All right. Here we go. Ensemble nomination. Moving on. American Fiction. Wow. American Fiction has leapt into the SAG Awards. This is crazy. American Fiction, Barbie, The Color Purple, Killers of the Flower Moon, and Oppenheimer. No Iron Claw love. I am devastated. I thought for sure SAG would just pull through and give them an ensemble nomination, something. I thought for sure Iron Claw would get some kind of love at the SAG nominations. I am really, really disappointed in this. Extremely dis. I mean, you know what? It's difficult because this year there were a lot of great movies, a lot of great last minute films that came out right in the last couple of weeks of last year. So it's difficult. I understand it. But man, I was really pulling for that movie. See, this is why SAG should have six nomination slots. They only have five. They only have five. And I feel like if there were six, Iron Claw could have snuck into the sixth spot. But no. Okay. Well, nothing overly super surprising except for the absence of the Iron Claw. I can understand the nominations for every single one of these movies. So... Except for American Fiction, because I haven't seen that movie yet. That's the only one I have not seen. So I cannot comment on their performances or anything like that. But I'm not saying it's not deserving. It probably is. But I was just really pulling for the Iron Claw. Oh, man, I'm so, so upset. Okay, so May, December completely shut out at the SAGs. That is interesting. Like I said, that is interesting. All right, so now the last category is the stunt category for movies. So outstanding action performance by a stunt ensemble in a motion picture. That's probably like the longest title for a nomination category. All right, we have Barbie. Why is Barbie in the stunt category? What did Barbie do for stunts? What, the car flip? <laughs> the car flip a couple of times? Riding bikes? That's why they're not... I can't go with that one. I really can't. I can't. Especially when it's going up against Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Indiana Jones, well, even this one's borderline, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. That's like, you know, John Wick Chapter 4. That is justified, okay? Where's Extraction 2 on here? I feel like that movie should get recognition. And then Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1. Yeah, I... Compared to Mission Impossible and John Wick Chapter 4, I cannot co-sign with Barbie getting a stunt nomination. Like, that's kind of ridiculous to me. What is that? <laughs> that, that, I mean, even Gar, I mean, no. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm going back in the movie, I'm like trying to think, what, what stunts did they do in Barbie? The car flipped a couple times. What? Her coming down from her dream house and like onto the onto the ground when she was driving the the Barbie mobile? Like, what is the stunts in Barbie? I'm so I I'm I'm trying to recall this and I can't. If you can, then please comment down below and let me know your thoughts about this because I'm okay with all of these nominations. I feel like they're all good. They're all justified. They're fine. Except for Barbie in the stunt category. I don't agree with that at all whatsoever. And you know what? I just thought of another movie completely shut out. Air. Air. One of my favorite films of last year. Completely shut out. Which is surprising. Because Viola Davis is loved by SAG. Like she could, you know, I don't know 
burp and they would nominate her for something best burp of the year i don't know sag would find a way to nominate viola davis but that is surprising that she's not in here so no love for air no love for the iron claw no love for may december at all whatsoever which i am fine with that because you guys know i'm not the biggest fan of that film because of the topic that they discuss why are we glorifying something like that and making a movie out of it i don't know so i'm fine with that so overall these are decent nominations there's nothing too too shocking the most shocking nomination is penelope cruz because literally that was out of nowhere i've heard that she is the best part of the movie from ferrari but i wasn't expecting her to get a nomination because at this point i was like she didn't get golden globe she didn't get Critics' Choice. Okay, they're done with her. Apparently not. Apparently she has a shot at the SAG. So that was the biggest surprise. But other than that, it's understandable why there's no Leo because Paul Giamatti got in. And, you know, it, it's all justified. So I have no problem with any of these. None at all whatsoever. So again, I feel like this award season is very solid with the nominations. They're actually nominating people that deserve to win something, which sometimes is not the case. But this year so far, I feel like everyone is doing a good job. So that's my reaction to the SAG nominations that occurred this morning. So comment down below and let me know your thoughts about these nominations. Do you agree with them or do you not? Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave and I'll see you next time.